everyone, it's Run Amok Reviews, or, well, Dead Space coming at you again. I changed my name to Run Amok Reviews purely because I decided I wanted to change my YouTube channel a little more to truly being a, well, video review channel, and Run Amok remains my most favorite Transformer along with, you know, Six Gun and Six Shot when it comes to G1, but I, I have a lot of faves. But outside of that, um... I did. I know what I said in my last review, my first one of SH Monster Arts Godzilla Ultima, that my second review would be SH Monster Arts Frozen Shin Godzilla. Well, it didn't exactly happen that way. I've been busy with school, but I got this guy in the mail recently because my birthday was a few days ago. And what I was originally planning on doing was not. Um, this is. Bootang um, tank former or the ZTC 96B tank former. He doesn't really have a name, it's just the actual tank he's named after. It is a licensed figure. Um, it's a Chinese tank, but I was planning on, since I finally got him in the mail, SH Monster Arts um, Godzilla Single Roller Point Jet Jaguar 2021. But mine came broken with one of his, or one of his arms broken, and I had to email BBTS to get a replacement part. And I decided, I was like, oh, hey, instead of Frozen Shin, like I originally said, I'm still going to do an SH Monster Arts review, like I said, but I was going to do the second part and hopefully like a three, four part series if they make a Anguirus and once I get Rodan. But I decided that since I, I've been messing around with this dude for a while, I've transformed him about four or five times, I've had him for a day or two, and it's a relatively recent review as far as when I've gotten him, paid around like $70 for him. Um... He's not any licensed Transformers character, but it is just, I'll call him, I'll just call him Tank Former throughout this video, but there are two Tank Formers. You have the Light Tank Former and the ZTZ-96B Tank Former, who is a larger tank. Um, they don't have direct names. But he does, I mean, I guess you could say he's inspired by Bludgeon, but not really another one of my favorite. I love Bludgeon. But just to take a look at it, I'll get the figure out of frame real quick. But I will say this thing, just to go ahead and kind of give it away. God tier. Um, but here's the box, and the box is gorgeous. It reminds me of the, I don't know if you, if any of you have it, but um, the TFC Hades figures, which is um, a third-party take on Leo Kaiser. But it's a good, tough box. There's no styrofoam insert, but here's the front cover. You have a um, top-facing diagram of the tank, which is a ZTC-96B. You have... Tank former in his robot mode with the tank turret with as his spear and his shield. You have this side of the box, and I am doing an impromptu recording studio. This might be my permanent one because I think it makes it better and a little easier to see things in the background. And my current um, OG recording studio, which is just a little black table in the background, it's a little coffee table, um, is taken out by um, Warbatron. But yeah, so you can just call me Run Amok Reviews, by the way, now. Um, there's a the left product shot. Here's the product shots on the back with him in his tank mode and him, him holding a spear with the tank turret attached to his back. You have like what I assume says Boo-Tang. Yeah, Boo-Tang. And then just, it, this is, I believe, all Chinese. Yeah, it's Chinese. I unfortunately can't read it, but um, I can read a little bit of Spanish though. But, oh, one last thing, the box is a flat box and opens up for another product shot of the tank and the where the figure would be. Really pretty box. I'm not going to be tossing it yet. And let's go ahead and get Tank Former back in frame. And I feel like this little backdrop, I, I got a lamp over there to my right, so that's what's helping me out here. Here is Boo Tang's first release on the ZTC 96B Tank Former, who is a beautiful hunk of plastic and a little bit of metal and i didn't know that it doesn't say on it doesn't list on bbts him being made of any metal but he does have die cast but here he is in his standard display pose that i'm able to fit on my shelf he is very poseable but not to an extreme point but he's big and chunky to me i i'd say he he almost gives me some like um what's his name um One second. He gives me not 
never mind, I'll change what I was going to make. Maybe Mongolian, just some form. It's, it's definitely not samurai-based. While he does have a crest, he doesn't have, like, the sheeted armor that's made for sword battle. Like, if you own the original Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon figure, you know what I mean by the way that he, it almost looks like shingles on the top of a house, like a roof. But yeah, he does not, he's not trying to be anyone specific. It's just his own design. And this thing is awesome. But just to go ahead and get into it, I'll go ahead and tank his, er, tank. I'll tank his weapons off, or take his weapons off. And pardon the little bit of marker on my hands from school. But here is Tank Former just by himself. And I am just using a Galaxy S20 to record all of this. So I'm sorry, I don't have perfect light. There, move his arm out of the way. And there is his very pretty head sculpt. Maybe a little bit more towards the light. But he's very, very good looking. And I, I really like this figure. But as you can hear, he has very clicky ratchets in a lot of places. But like I said, his name is just CTC-96B, which is a form of Chinese tank. It's not a heavy tank, but it is some form of tank. Anyone who knows about it, feel free to inform me. Um, my brother was able to inform me somewhat on what little knowledge he had on the Chinese on Chinese tanks, but um, he has a little bit more knowledge on German tanks and Russian tanks. But the figure itself does a very good job at just being its own design. I'm, I'm. This is all unscripted. I know I've said it before, but. To go off of it, he has beautiful accented paint apps here on his arms, on his forearms, his kneecaps, and his crest on his head. And they're all a really good gold that is extremely chip resistant. Uh, there's a hole, this acts as a hole in a peg, acts as a peg for the tank mode to go on his back and on the top of the tank. And it acts as a hole to tap into that peg to be a shield. Um... And I've pulled it on and off multiple times of his elbow here, and it has yet to chip. There's really pretty little black accents all over. It might be a little hard to see in my lighting, but it is very much there. But yeah. Um, the figure itself is really pretty, and I just, I really enjoy the robot mode. Pose, and the reason I am covering him in his robot mode is due to the fact that he came packaged like this, and for anyone who struggles to understand the instructions, because they were a little bit iffy, but I was able to figure it out, um, so as long as you pay good attention, and all, the transformation's really fun once you get down to it. But, um, by the way, just to expect it, most of my reviews are probably going to be Transformers and third-party related stuff as well as some Gunpla. But yes, going over the other paint, he does have a very Bayverse and or um, aesthetic-esque design for his eyes. It's hard to see unless you get very close, but he has like several indents in his eyes that make it look like he has like metal pupils and irises. And it's all painted in this pretty seafoam green, the same color that's here on his chest. And it's just, this figure feels great, and it's hefty, and it's chunky. Um, and yeah, to go ahead and go over the articulation, you have ratchets up and down at the shoulders, very clicky ratchets that are used for transformation. Soft ratchets at the um, outside of the actual shoulder instead of at the base. You have really nice clicky audible ratchets for the rotation. You have a bicep swivel, and then a hinge at the elbow that gets you about that far a wrist swivel, and a hinge at the fingers that allow them to open and close to hold his weapons, um, a ball joint at the head that is pretty much unlimited, allowing him to look up that far, look down that far, and look side to side, and if you really feel like. The only reason he needs to turn his head around a full 360 is for the sake of transformation, but it's not even completely necessary. Um, the hips going down, you can fold up what is this little crotch plate. It's just on a hinge. Show it off the best that I can. And if you pop this back panel a little bit out, he can already do a waist swivel, but it's a little hindered. But if you pop the panel back, you can it's completely unhindered, and it can rotate completely. His hips can also kick up pretty far forward if you move the hip straight out of the way. 
cater that far forward and that far back. If you move his arms out and up a lot, he can do a full split. His waist is a little rotated. There we are, full split. A really buttery smooth thigh swivel. It bend at the knee that also moves the knee pad and it can bend about, I think that's about 45 degrees. And then you have a hinge that goes forward and back at the ankle and then a good side to side pivot. And this is correctly transformed you, do, you want that part of his seat flat, but it does just straight up look like tank bits. And I know this video is going to be long. I need to start scripting this. But to point, before I go into transformation, to point out the die cast, his whole chest, the front of his chest, is die cast metal. It's cold. And then the knee pads here, the, which my thumbs are on, are cold. But that's it. That's all of the ratchets. You have some really, you can see how durable those you can see the springs inside of the ratchet joints, the, the shine from them. But yeah, I love this figure. It's gorgeous. But to go ahead and get into... Oh, wait. Before I get into transformation, just might as well show off a few action poses outside of the little base stance because he is very much so capable of it because I feel like it's better if I do go into it and just give an example of a pose that he can strike. but he is very much so capable. I'm, I'm still yet to find a pose that I think he looks very action-packed in, but he is capable of pulling it off. And the just to pull a little Glenn Webb, R.I.P. Glenn, even though he's been passed, he passed away several years ago. The widest stance he can get with both of his feet flat on the floor is about that but to start the transformation it's not hard whatsoever but it is going to be a little difficult for me since i'm behind my phone to so go ahead and start and do the easy parts start with the setting up of his weapon and his, and his tank turret the weapon you just simply you have this little hollow space in the back fold up the blade and then the tank turret will pop and or the spear will pop into three pieces this middle piece you can toss aside and you can reconnect the front it's a little slightly shaved peg with a flat edge, and there's a flat edge on the front of it where you slide it on. The middle piece, there's a little set of grooves down here on the bottom, which gives me big, like, bludgeon vibes. This is the one case where I feel like they took some inspiration of bludgeon of making the tank turret really do some stuff. And then there's these grooves on the top of the spear and the grooves on the inside of the tank slash base slash shield. And that can all slide up and you get the tank turret. Also, make sure to be the only part that I would say you have to worry about breaking if you're like, even if you are careful, is these little antenna and the little gun here can pop out. But going ahead and starting his transformation, straighten out tank former's arms, take his head, rotate it full 360 just for the sake of it. Even though, because it will peek out of the bottom of the tank, you won't see it from the back or the front of the tank, but if you pick it up and look at the bottom, you can see it. It's not that big of a deal, but if you have, like, it doing it, like, over, if you're animating it or anything, stop motion animator, you might want to concern about that. But after you turn the set around, take his forearms, also rotate them, and make sure they sit flush with the side of the tank like that, or the rest of his arms, and it will look like one singular piece. From here, you're going to grab at these little parts of the tread and pull them out on the double hinges. There's three tabs on each one of these. You can tab those in, and, like, a certain person would say second verse same as the first tab those in they are very sturdy but this is not by no means for little children so you need to pay attention with what you're doing this little front panel fold it up this whole back piece you're going to grab it all the way at the base 
like right behind his head, see where my finger is touching? There's this little set of hinges and you're gonna grab it and you're gonna untab it. It's gonna feel really tight when you first do it because he was all freshly painted. Also, none of this is chipped. Um, and that's gonna untab and then you can fold this back so you can rotate this a full 360. From here, you can go and straighten out his feet. You, these are his heel spurs. You're gonna push them back and tab them in up here. And those are the tank treads, like so. Leave these panels up for now until I let you know to, um, these panels until I let you know to push them down. From here, tape the shoulders and click them up on the base and straighten all of it out till it's flush. Click that up, straighten it out till it's flush, and you can fold this against his butt now. From here, you have both of his legs. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate out the thigh. There's this little area where there's a tab that's right here. I'll move the arm just so you can really see because I want to ensure that no one... Just, I don't want you to break it and sour your taste of a figure that's actually really easy to not break. It's not like this thing is not feel fragile at all. But there's a tab here and this set of double hinges. Also make sure when you go back you have this bent in a specific way. And you're going to pull that out and that just simply untabs. From here it's like a lot of tank formers in the first place and H tanks even though he's not an H tank. And this all folds out and you can fold this panel up. From here, there's the second panel that you can pull up, and as you pull that up, it folds in that tab. From here, you can make sure both the arms are flush again, and there's this little peg. It's not little, but it, it's like a, it's the same size as the handle of the gun. There it is. It's kind of hard to see because it's dark. That right there. That tab right below the gray piece, that right there, where the it's right by the tip of my finger, that's what you want to go in his hand. So you're gonna slide that up and tab that in. And while you're doing that, you're also gonna line up this tab and a little hole in the tread and tab that in. And I didn't even notice that on the first time, but I still managed to not mess it up. Second verse, same as the first. It's just easier to say that, quite honestly. Fold up that panel piece, fold this around on this double hinge, untab this, fold it around, till that little brownish gray peg goes in his hand and tab in the treads. From here, you can take these side panels, collapse them completely, make sure that little groove is filled on by that little tab, push it in like so, and then there's a second little hole here and a second tab here where you can push that down. This does not need to be pushed down yet, by the way. Fold that down. And make sure this little tab lines up with that gray piece, like so. And then this can all come down and do the same thing on the other side. Fold this panel down. And there you have most of the tank ready and done. Take um, this panel first. This has two little notches. Fold it around. Leap the notches down first. And there's a second one with the two little accommodating tabs and those will lock together. From here, fold this panel all the way up and you're gonna untab it, this is another tight portion, from the other half of it. And it, does, it sounds like it's breaking it, but I can assure you it's not. It's just a little clip and it will split in half. Just be gentle but firm when you first do it and after the first time you do it, it will loosen up and you'll get used to it. Once again, there's a set of grooves on each part. See the little holes down there? Doesn't want to focus because it's too dark. I should have filmed this during the day. Two little holes there, two little tabs there. Line those up. And then there's two little grooves on these little back panels you folded out. And this is all going to come down. And there's a second little set of tiny little locking tabs that you'll push around the pieces. And it will, you'll hear a little click and it will flatten out like so. This last piece you straighten out, and there's this little under part that folds out to help cover up the front of the tank. And it's not a part swimming piece like Kingdom Warpath. That's the only time I thought part swimming was dumb in recent time. Because stuff like the weapon part swarming and using it creatively doesn't bother me. But it's a little hard to describe this, but it's once again a second set of grooves and a little set of tabs. And you're just going to make sure they line up, not even tabs, but like notches, like really shallow pieces. And you're going to make sure it lines up till it's flush and it clicks in. And from here, you have your tank turret. There's the second hole that was put here in the middle because there's two different ones. That's the one for the robot mode. That's the one for the tank. 
and you pop it right in there for the tank mode. And there is the ZTC 96B tank, and you will still feel the die cast on the bottom if you're holding it. But it is a really pretty little tank. And it does have little wheels, unlike um, Warbitron, Bruticus's um, Heavy Noisy, which is their take on Brawl. That figure is really cool. And I got the updated version so the plastic isn't crap. Um, but it, he doesn't have little rolly wheels. And that's both an annoyance and not. And this video is way too long. But it is a Chinese tank. You have a little depiction of the Chinese slide on the side, which is that little red square. But there's no stars on it at all. And then there's a little Chinese star right there. And you have your hatches and your little 50 cal, or what I assume is a 50 cal. It's not a browning because that's an American weapon, but it is some sort of 50 cal weapon. But yeah, um, articulation in the tank mode, I mean, it's just a swivel. Also, there's it is made to sit a little bit above like that. And unlike Warbitron um, Brawl, it doesn't feel like it sits too low where it's scraping anything at all. Because that's the only issue I have with that. It sounds like I'm complaining. But I'm really not. I was a little soured on Warbitron Bruticus just because I had something happen with Onslaught that wasn't even caused by me. I'm unlucky. And there was, um, there's two things that happened. When I ordered Warbitron Bruticus, Blastoff had two parts for his right arm. Um, and he had, I, I was able to get that resolved, but then several months later, once I finally came back to mess with them, once I had the time and the space, um, I popped them out and one of, I just, I literally, had um onslaught's trailer which is the hips of bruticus there's massive ratchet joints in it and the springs were so strong and there were only three screws holding the whole leg piece together that one, where one of the screws was the little um tubes where the screw goes in snapped in half but yeah here's the tank mode articulation like i said rotation at the turret feels nice and smooth and elevating at the turret and then this little machine gun can twist left and right and if it gets a little loose just push it back down on its hole and you have several little areas where, like, someone can stand and ammunition and hatches and lights and etc. And this thing is just painted. Tell. I got some oil on. But I'm not going to really need to touch the figure at all after this thing. Sorry, I'm using a little Joby tripod. But just to get a good look at the figure. Get up close and personal. Is 103. This is actually based off of a specific model tank that you can find pictures of. Like the, this specific model number, like that one that came out. Or unit number, sorry. 103. There's the flag again. Some smoke grenade or just grenade launchers. The treads are non functional, of course. They're not rubber. But they look beautiful. It's back to the tank. Really well done. Nothing visible. This is what I was talking about. He it is just his robot chest, and I would recommend turning the head around. They don't tell you to in the instructions, as far as I recall. But if you want to, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Because in the end, it's a it's a fucking tank. You're not going to see the bottom of it. But this, sorry, I'm, I'm holding it and moving it around. But I really like it, and there's even a specific... This might even be Siege, like, Blast Effect compatible. I can't... No, it's not. Never mind. It's not a 3mm port. But it looks really good. And this is actually quite big. Um, to give you, I mean, I guess example, let me throw my foot up there. Um, my, I wear about like a size 11, 11 and a half to maybe 12s in shoes. And that's it. It's about the size of my foot. It, it's very big. Or another comparison. I, I don't know. What can I use as a comparison? Um, my camera, my actual Canon camera, my it's not a recording camera, it's just for photos. I originally did try to record a video on this, and it cuts out at a certain time. It's not a video camera. It's not made to store that long of videos, and I could have done that and had way higher quality videos, but it didn't work. So, there's my camera. It's a Canon EOS Rebel T7. There's its tripod mount. And that's for scale. For you. Um, outside of that, I mean, something that's more common, not common, but I'll grab the more common thing um, in a second. But there is Jet Jaguar's box, which is way smaller than Godzilla Ultima's. Or let me get up real quick. I'll just show you where I'm grabbing it from. Here's 
it's all covered. Yes, there's wipes there. Some of the figures I had to clean off because I did some stuff on them that I shouldn't have done. But here is um, Transformers Generation Select's um, leader Galactic Man Shockwave with all his armor on. And most people at least have this mold in some way, or at least they've seen it if you watch Transformers reviews. There's scale for you. Um, do you have anyone in vehicle mode? Oh, there's TFC, um, Finalis. There's the box. That's what I was talking about on the Hades members. Oh, one, what I hope to be a suit of review that's sometime soon. The, um, MechFans Toys Camera Brothers, third-party reflector, and I'd also like to review TFC, um, Photron. Yeah, I really like reflector. Anything that turns into a camera, because that's what I hope to... Um, open a business in photography, but yeah, that was my video review of Boo Tanks or Boa Tanks, um, ZTC 96B tank former. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll get to you next time. This was Run Around Reviews, and I'm 